Welcome back to Summer Reading. This is week three of Imagine Your Virtual Story. This week's theme is The Ugly Duckling. We're gonna read the original version this time, uh, but if you wanna see an alternate, go back and watch yesterday's video. The Ugly Duckling was originally written down by Hans Christian Andersen. This version was translated by R.P. Kegwin and illustrated by Toma Bogdanovich. Published by Scroll Press Inc., New York. The Ugly Duckling. Okay. Summertime, how lovely it was out in the country with the wheat standing yellow, the oats green and the hay all stacked down in the grassy meadows. And there went the stork on his long legs chattering away in Egyptian for he had learnt that language from his mother. The fields and meadows had large woods all around, and in the middle of the woods, there were deep lakes. Yes, it certainly was lovely out in the country. Bathed in sunshine stood an old manor house with a deep moat around it, and growing out of the wall, down by the water, were huge dock leaves. The biggest of them were so tall that little children could stand upright underneath. The place was as tangled and twisty as the densest forest, and here it was that a duck was sitting on her nest. It was time for her to hatch out her little ducklings, but it was such a long job that she was beginning to lose patience. At last, the eggs cracked open one after the other, peep, 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 and all the yolks had come to life and were sticking out their heads. Quack, quack, said the mother duck, and then the little ones scuttled out as quickly as they could, prying all around under the green leaves. And she let them do this as much as they liked because green is so good for the eyes. Oh, how big the world is, said the ducklings. And they certainly had much more room now than when they were lying in the egg. Do you suppose this is the whole world, said their mother? Why, it goes a long way past the other side of the garden, right into the parson's field. But I've never been as far as that. Well, you're all out now, I hope. And she got up from her nest. Oh no, not at all. The largest egg is still here. However long will it be? I can't bother about it much more. And she went on sitting again. At last, the big egg cracked. There was a beep beep from the young one as he tumbled out looking so large and ugly. The duck glanced around him and said, my, what a huge, great duckling that is. None of the others look like that. The next day, the weather was gloriously fine, with sun shining on all the green dock leaves. The mother duck with her whole family came down to the moat. Splash! Into the water she jumped. Quack, quack, she said, and one after another, the ducklings plumped in after her. The water closed over their heads, but they were up again in a moment and floated along so beautifully. Their legs worked of their own accord, and now the whole lot were in the water. Even the ugly gray one joined in the swimming. Look how beautifully he uses his legs, said the duck, and how straight he holds himself. He's my own little one after all, and he's quite handsome when you really come to look at him. Quack, quack. Now come along with me and let me show you the world and introduce you to all the barnyard. Then they made their way into the duckyard. Now then, where are your legs, she said. Look slippy and make a nice bow to the old duck over there. She's the most genteel of all these. She has Spanish blood, that's why she's so plump. And do you see that crimson rag she wears on one leg? It's extremely fine. It's the highest distinction any duck can win. It's as good as saying that there is no thought of getting rid of her. Man and beast are to take notice. Look alive and don't turn your toes in. A well-bred duckling turns its toes out like father and mother. That's it, now make a bow and say quack. They all obeyed, but the other ducks round about looked at them and said aloud, what a sight that duckling is. We can't possibly put up with him and one duck immediately flew at him and bit him on the neck. Leave him alone, said his mother. He's doing no one any harm. Yes, but he's so gawky a peculiar, said the one that had pecked him. He'll have to be squashed. He's not pretty, said the duckling's mother, but he's so good tempered and he can swim just as well as the others. I dare say even a bit better. I fancy his looks will improve as he grows up or maybe in time he'll grow down a little. I feel sure he'll turn out plenty strong and be able to manage all right. But the poor duckling who was the last out of the egg and looked so ugly, got pecked and jostled and teased by ducks and hens alike. The great gawk, they all chuckled. The poor duckling didn't know where to turn. 
He was terribly upset over being so ugly and the laughing stock of the whole barnyard. Things grew worse and worse. Even his own brothers and sisters treated him badly, and they kept saying, if only the cat would get you, you ridiculous great guy. And the mother herself wished he were far away. The ducks nipped him and the hens pecked him, and the maid who had to feed the poultry left fly at him with her foot. After that, he ran away and fluttered over the hedge, and the little birds in the bushes grew frightened and flew into the air. That's because I'm so ugly, thought the duckling, and closed his eyes, and yet managed to get away. Eventually, he came out to the great marsh where the wild ducks lived and lay there all night, utterly tired and dispirited. After he had been there for two whole days, two wild geese came along. Look here, my lad, they began. You are so ugly that we quite like you. Will you come in with us and migrate? Bang, bang, suddenly echoed above him, and the flocks of wild geese flew up from the rushes so that immediately fresh shots rang out. A big shoot was on. The hunting party lay ready all around the marsh. Clouds of blue smoke drifted in among the dark trees and hung far over the water. Splashing through the mud came the gun dogs, bending back reeds and rushes this way and that. It was terrifying for the poor duckling, who was just turning his head around to bury it under his wing, when he suddenly found close beside him a fearsome great dog with lolling tongue and grim glittering eyes. It lowered its muzzle right down to the duckling, bared its sharp teeth, and splash, it went off again without touching him. The ducklings gave a sigh of relief. Oh, thank goodness, I'm so ugly that even the dog doesn't fancy the taste of me. And he lay there quite still while the shot pattered on the reeds and crack after crack was heard from the guns. It was late in the day before everything was quiet again, but the poor duckling didn't dare to get up yet. He waited several hours longer before he took a look around and then made off from the marsh as fast as he could go. Over field and meadow he scuttled, but there was such a wind that he found it difficult to get along. Towards evening, he came to a poor little farm cottage. It was so broken down that it hardly knew which way to fall, and so it remained standing. The wind whizzed so fiercely around the duckling that he had to sit on his tail so as not to be blown over. The wind grew worse and worse. Then he noticed that the door had come off one of its hinges and hung so much on the slant that he could slip into the house through the crack. And that's just what he did. There was an old woman living here with her cat and her hen. The cat, whom she called Sunny, could arch its back and purr. It could even give out sparks if you stroked its fur the wrong way. The hen had such short little legs that it was called Chickabitty Short Legs. It was a very good layer, and the woman loved it like her own child. Next morning, they at once noticed the strange duckling, and the cat started to purr and the hen to cluck. Why, what's up, said the woman, looking round, but her sight wasn't very good, and she took the duckling for a fat duck that had lost its way. My, what a find, she said. Ish, I shall be able to have duck's eggs, as long as it isn't a drake. We must give it a trial. And so the duckling was taken on trial for three weeks, but there was no sign of an egg. Now the cat was master in the house, and the hen was mistress, and they always used to say, we and the world, because they fancied that they made up half the world. What's more, much the superior half of it. The duckling thought there might be two opinions about that, but the hen wouldn't hear of it. Can you lay eggs, she asked. No. Well then, hold your tongue, will you? And the cat asked, can you arch your back or purr or give out sparks? No. Well then, your opinion's not wanted when sensible people are talking. And the duckling sat in the corner quite out of spirits. Then suddenly, he remembered the fresh air and the sunshine, and he got such a curious longing to swim in the water that he couldn't help it. He had to tell the hen. What's the matter with you, she asked. You haven't anything to do. That's why you get these fancies. They'd soon go if only you'd lay eggs or purr. But it's so lovely to swim in the water, said the duckling. So lovely to duck your head in it and dive down to the bottom. Most endurable, I'm sure, said the hen. You must have gone crazy. Ask the cat about it. I've never met anyone as clever as he is. Ask him if he's fond of swimming or diving. I say nothing of myself. Ask our old mistress, the wisest woman in the world. Do you suppose that she's keen on swimming and diving? Oh, you don't understand me, said the duckling. Well, if we don't understand you, I should like to know who would. Surely you'll never try and make out you are wiser than the cat and the mistress, not to mention myself. Don't be silly, child. Give thanks to your maker for all the kindness you've met with. Haven't you come to a nice warm room where you have company that can teach you something? But if you're just a stupid, then there's no fun in having you here. You may take my word for it. If I say unpleasant things to you, it's all for your own good. 
That's just how you can tell which are your real friends. Only see that you lay eggs and learn how to purr or give out sparks. I think I'll go out into the wide world, said the duckling. Then do, said the hen. And so the duckling went off. He swam in the water, he dived down, but no animal would have anything to do with him because of his ugliness. One evening, when there was a lovely sunset, a whole flock of large, handsome birds appeared out of the bushes. The duckling had never seen such beautiful birds, all glittering white with long, graceful necks. They were swans. They gave the most extraordinary cry, spread out their magnificent long wings, and flew from this cold country away to warmer lands and open lakes. They mounted high, high up into the air, and the ugly little duckling felt so strange as he watched them. He turned round and round in the water like a wheel and craned his neck in their direction, letting out a cry so shrill and strange that it quite scared even himself. Oh, he could never forget those beautiful, fortunate birds, and directly they were lost to sight. He dived right down to the bottom, and when he came up again, he was almost beside himself. He had no idea what the birds were called, nor where they were flying to, and yet they were dearer to him than any he had ever known. He didn't envy them in the least. How could he ever dream of such loveliness for himself? He would be quite satisfied if only the ducks would just put up with him. Poor gawky-looking creature. What a cold winter it was. The duckling had to keep swimming about in the water to prevent it freezing right up. But every night, the pool he was swimming in grew smaller and smaller. Then the ice froze so hard that you could hear it cracking. The duckling had to keep his feet moving all the time to prevent the water from closing up. At last he grew faint with exhaustion and lay quite still, and finally he froze fast in the ice. Early the next morning he was seen by a peasant who went out and broke the ice with his axe and carried the duckling home to his wife, and there they revived him. The children wanted to play with him, but the duckling was afraid they meant mischief and fluttered in panic right up into the milk bowl so that the milk slopped over into the room. The woman screamed and clapped her hands and then he flew into the butter tub and from there down into the flour bin and out of it again. Dear, dear, he did look an object. The woman screamed and hit at him with the tongs and the children tumbled over each other trying to catch him. How they laughed and shouted. It was a good thing the door was open. The duckling darted out into the bushes and sank down dazed into the new fallen snow. But it would be too far too dismal to describe all the want and misery the duckling had to go through during that hard winter. He was sheltering among the reeds on the marsh when the sun began to get warm again and the larks to sing. The beautiful spring had arrived. Then all at once he tried his wings. The whir of them was louder than before and they carried him away swiftly. Almost before he realized, he found himself in a big garden with apple trees in blossom and sweet smelling lilac that dangled from long green boughs right over the winding stream. Oh, it was so lovely here in all the freshness of spring. And straight ahead out of the thicket came three beautiful white swans, ruffling their feathers and floating so lightly on the water. The duckling recognized the splendid creatures and was overcome with a strange feeling of melancholy. I will fly across to them, those royal birds. They will peck me to death for daring, ugly as I am, to go near them. But never mind, better to be killed by them than to be nipped by the ducks, pecked by the hens, and kicked by the girl, and suffer hardship in the winter. So he flew out on the water and swam towards the beautiful swans. As they caught sight of him, they darted with ruffled feathers to meet him. Yes, kill me, kill me, cried the poor creature, and bowed his head to the water, awaiting his death. But what did he see there in the clear stream? It was a reflection of himself that he saw in front of him but no longer a clumsy gray bird, ugly and unattractive. No, he was himself a swan. It doesn't matter about being born in a duck yard, as long as you're hatched from a swan's egg. He felt positively glad at having gone through so much hardship and want. It helped him to appreciate all the happiness and beauty that were there to welcome him. And the three great swans swam around and around and stroked him with their heads. Some little children came into the garden and threw bread and grain into the water, and the smallest one called out, There's a new swan! And the other children joined in with shouts of delight, Yes, there's a new swan! And they clapped their hands and danced and ran to fetch father and mother. Bites of bread and cake were thrown into the water, and everyone said, The new one is the prettiest. So young and handsome, and the old swans bowed before him.
This made him feel quite shy, and he tucked his head away under his wing. He hardly knew why. He was too, too happy, but not a bit proud, for a good heart is never proud. He thought of how he had been despised and persecuted, and how he had heard everybody saying that he was the loveliest of all the lovely birds. And the lilacs bowed their branches to him right down to the water, and the sunshine felt so warm and kindly. Then he ruffled his feathers, raised his slender neck, and rejoiced from his heart. I never dreamed of so much happiness when I was the ugly duckling. Today's project is to make a feather pen. I'm actually gonna use pencil. Um, and I've got some duct tape here. If you don't have duct tape at home, don't worry. You can use any kind of tape. You could also use paper if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use the duct tape. You'll also need something to put your tape on. So either a pen or a pencil. I just happen to have this pencil. And then I'm gonna use some scissors to cut my tape, but of course you don't need that unless you want it. So I'm gonna kind of use my pencil to figure out how tall I want my feather to be. I'm gonna make it about two inches taller than my feather. I mean, I'm gonna make my feather about two inches taller than my pencil. There we go. Okay. That's good. Now, I need two pieces of tape that are the same size. If all you have is a thin tape, you're gonna have to make, you're gonna have to kind of um, stack them on top of each other. Like if you lay one piece here, you can lay the other piece on the side of it so it overlaps just a little bit and it'll stick together and make it wider. But if you already have a thick tape like duct tape, don't worry about that step. Just gonna go like this, yikes. So I can make sure that I get them the same size. There we go. Now, put my tape down. I'm gonna put my pencil on the tape. Like that, just stick it to it. I'm gonna lay the other piece right on top. So the sticky sides are sticking together. Okay, Let's stick them down. Like this. Okay, now I do need my scissors because I have to cut the tape to look like a feather. So the bottom you want to be kind of pointy, like a pointed triangle, like this. You see how it makes kind of a triangle with the pencil sticking out of the top? Like that? That's the bottom. Now the top, you want to make it round. So cut a curve like this just to take the corners off. Oops. All right. See, it already almost looks like a feather. Now, what we're gonna do with the rest of it is cut some slanted lines. So I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna start at what is the bottom because it's upside down. And I'm gonna cut some little slashes like this to make the little pieces of feather. Watch. Oh, I need some sharper scissors. If you can give them a little bit of a curve, see how they're kind of curved? That works really well. you want you can leave some little pieces sticking out and you can kind of crumple up the feather like this just to make it look a little more like a real feather. There we go! One quill pen! 
Thank you for coming to Summer Reading today. I hope you enjoyed hearing the original Ugly Duckling. Don't forget to log the time you spent watching this video on your online reading log and follow the link to our website for more activities to keep you busy all week long learning about the Ugly Duckling. Happy Summer Reading!